This is Stephen Kotler, and you're listening to Your Superior Self. This is Christina Rasmussen, and this is Your Superior Self. Hi, this is Dave Meltzer, and this is Your Superior Self. Hi, I'm Anita Marjani, and this is Your Superior Self. Hi, this is Paul Selig, and this is Your Superior Self. What's up, everybody? I'm Aubrey Marcus, and this is Your Superior Self. What is up, beautiful people? Welcome back. I'm Trey Downs, and this is Your Superior Self. Thank you guys for taking the time to download. Thank you for listening. You're going to be pretty glad that you did, because today I have Mary Medeiros on the show. Emmy Award-winning television director for her work on essentially every network there is. Best known for her outstanding director direction for ABC's General Hospital and NBC's Another World. Yeah. She's big time. In the real world, I guess you want to call it. But I know her through what she does. What she, what she, her true calling, I should say. And that is her Akashic record reading um, abilities, I should say. I had an appointment with her. We sat down for like an hour and she read my Akashic reading, which is essentially my entire history at a soul level. And I was, it was so impactful for me. It was very powerful because it, it really gave me some insight into who I am now, like this being that I am now, this human that I am now some of the trauma, some of the drama, some of the past karmas or whatever you want to call that, what I'm working through right now. What may have been useful then can be useful now and so forth. But I loved every minute of that. I loved every minute connecting with Mary. She's so good at it. She's so, if you listen to this episode all the way through, you will walk away with so much more than what you came You'll, you'll walk away here with the knowledge that you can make a good decision on whether or not you need to have an Akashic reading. And I think that a lot of people, I think the probability would be higher than not uh, of those that want to have one after listening to this episode. That's just me. I think that people would walk away from listening to this and listening to Mary's story and connecting with her through this conversation and will want to have a conversation with her about their Akashic reading or Akashic records. I can never say it right. Akashic, Akashic, either or. Collective consciousness, I call it. But to be able to tap into that, think I mean, just think about the success that Mary's had in the real world <laughs> that we consider this real world, the machine that has been put together by us, that is uh, uh, anything but perfect. But this other side, this other this other calling that she's been this other, I want to say service that she's providing people is what makes her feel so good. And she'll tell you she is blessed beyond anything to be able to provide this service to people to help them to see them at a soul level to help them get through this to this lifetime maybe understand a couple things that they didn't understand about themselves this is her calling and when you're doing your calling there's nothing 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 that can beat that nothing And to give you a little perspective, here is a clip of our conversation. Know that we are divine and experience our own divine, not holy, divine. It's going to be kind of messy. Once we know we're divine, that's sacred activism. That's the key to sacred activism. Activism without knowing we're divine is we just go around screaming at everybody to stop it. Um, Well, give give them an example of being divine. And not holy. You know what I mean? Like the difference. Oh, okay. Well, holy feels like it is um, you're greater. 
holy feels like it's, it, it, this is my perspective now, it's a lot of times it's really, it's attached to religions, but like holy is like, you're special. That's what it feels like to me. Like holy is special. Spiritual, like holy is like, whoa, up here. And spiritual to me feels like we're all the same mm -hmm. in the eyes of source, all the same, every single second of every day, even the murderer, even the rapist, the hardest thing for people to hear, right? And it's really hard for people to have compassion for those kinds of people that are doing horrible things. I'm not, I'm not saying we all should, we're not all here to do that. Um, however, in the eyes of divine, we are all the same. And once I discover that in my work, I went, oh my gosh, all these years I was feeling like crap because I was wearing my heart on my sleeve and thinking everyone was in their essence. I, I do believe that the essence of human beings, the essence of who we are is divine, no matter what color, race, and where we've been. I believe that. And I know this is a hard concept for a lot of people to understand, and it's hard for me as well. But at the basic level, at the micro level, we are all the same. We are made up of the same energy from the same source of the universe that that has created everything. And we're just individual mirrors of that source, of that energy. And the ego, which is very strong, makes us think that we are separate from everything else. That is why you have borders. That is why you have... Uh, countries it doesn't matter really it, these lines the, these dividing lines mean nothing in the grand scheme of things the ego has killed so many people by making us think that we are separate from everyone and we're not we are the same we are of each other connected everything everything in us is connected everything inside of us the energy the the flow of consciousness that it is comes in and out of us the energy the, the the positive and the negative it is all a circle flowing back into the one and i know some people are like what are you talking about but i'm telling you everything everything comes and goes and until we realize that we are more connected and more like Than different, then we'll never heal from the trauma that we've all created for each other. I mean, we've all we have all created it, thinking that you're better than someone, that you're different, that you're not as good, or if you're, you know, you're not doing the right things, and they're doing the the, the best things, and I'm not good enough because they're doing this, and this, this, and that, and uh, all the noise, the noise, the noise, the noise means nothing at all. at all the rea reality that you portray is the reality that you portray nothing more nothing less very subjective it's your reality and who says it's reality who knows what we're here doing right now listening to this is it a dream I don't know I was dreaming last night and it felt real and I wake up and it's like, oh, that was a that was a dream. When will I wake up from this? I don't know. But until I do wake up from this dream, I will continue to have conversations with magnificent people like Mary Madeiras. And so with that said, let's get this thing started. But I want to hear about your your thoughts. Tradedowns.com, leave me a message. I'm fired up. Let's go. Let's get this thing started. <clears throat> Without further ado, here is my conversation with the great and powerful Mary Madeiras. Hi, this is Mary Madeiras, and welcome to Your Superior Self. Mary, Mary, Mary. <laughs> How are you? Thank you so much I'm, for joining the show. I'm great, Trey. Thanks for having me. Um. <sighs> This is this is going to be a fun conversation because you have a new book out. Well, not out. Excuse me. You have a, a book that is coming out that I cannot mm -hmm. wait to read. Mm -hmm. um, give everyone like a quick rundown what that's about. Um, 
Well, the book is, um, we're, we're, we're speaking about the Akashic Records today, which I'm sure your listeners know by now. And um, the book is sort of um, a, a compilation of downloads that I was receiving from my work in the records, from when my own work in my own records when I was studying the Akashic Records, um, as well as other really amazing, um, I don't know what to call it, juicy divine information that comes through that will benefit humanity, basically. Mm. You know, it's interesting. Do you remember the book Conversations with God? Yes. Neil, Do- Neil Donald yeah. Walsh. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, I imagine the same thing that happened to him I'm experiencing because I began working in the records thinking, okay, let me open my records. I'll work on healing my own wounds see what's up, that kind of thing, you know, get overviews, get some clarity. And then as I would ask specific questions, other amazing um, beyond nuggets of information would just pour through. And I would start sharing it. I, you know, years ago, I would share it with my friends and they would say, oh my gosh, I want, can I share it? This is amazing Um, because it, it's divine. It's coming from divine, just as Neil Donald Walsh in his words, it was coming from God, what God is for him. And well, so how does that um, come to you though? Like, how does it come? Well, it's interesting. It comes, um, you see, you know, I, I, I really should, can I share with how I came to the records? And then yeah. I think it'll so make I more didn't mean sense. To jump the gun. I'm excited. No, that's okay. <laughs> I am too. I, I, it's so hard. Cause I, I never know where to begin, but yeah, I'm going to begin good. where it began for me. Let's do it. Um, most of my career has, um, was, and has been, still is, I'm still working in media, but has been in television as a director. And um, however, when I was really little, I do remember feeling a connection to something beyond myself. I'll say that. Some people call it religions, whatever. I grew up in a religion that I don't follow anymore, but, um, but I, I felt something. I knew something really important was, was there that was greater than all of us. And so put that on hold. Then I went in barreling into this career and a very exciting career in television. And then I every so often would have psychic readings as probably most of us do. And I w- went to my, my regular psychic person, psychic reader. And she said to me, I, you have, there's this dude over your shoulder. There's this dude. And, <laughs> and I said, um, what, who is he? And, and she said, well, he's, he looks like a genie. He's actually very good looking. And I said, this is cool. Like, I want to know who he is. And she said, he, he's, he protects, well, two things she said that were really telling. One was he's, he told her, uh, that he oversees my Akashic records. And I asked her then, I didn't know. I said, what are the Akashic records? And she said, I don't know, but he's saying that's what he does. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that was telling was he said that, He translates sacred geometry into creative ideas that then he gives to me. And what's interesting is whenever I be on sets working with actors or doing something very creative, I would get an idea that I knew was not, I didn't conjure it up because I would come in with my plan for the scenes, whatever. And then something else would happen and I never thought, I just would go, let's try this. And, the, and a lot of the actors would be like, that's a great idea. Where did you get that? And I would say, I don't know, it just came in. I used to just say that without thinking about what I was saying yeah. until that reading. So I went home, I looked up the Akashic Records, I, you know, went online, Googled it, mm-hmm. and I got a hit, but I wasn't like hit over the head. But I, I really, I felt something and then forgot about it and went back into my job. And then what's interesting is I was at this uh, metaphysical bookstore in, out here in, in L.A., the Bodhi tree, I think they're still there. Mm -hmm. And I was in the back room by myself and there was this book sticking, teetering off the shelf above me. And um, I looked up and it was the book, How to Read Your Akashic Records. And I was like, you know, we get signs, it's so interesting. And so I pulled the book down, I inhaled it. I like to use those words because that's how it felt. And I began opening my records because um, it's by Linda Howe. And I, I, it was just so easy. and. The way it works for me, getting back to your question is, when I open my records using a sacred prayer or anyone's records, I get blocks of thought, sometimes images. It's not psychic. It's not chatting with somebody on the other side. It's a dimension of consciousness 
of divine consciousness that contains the um, everything that every soul has ever thought, said, or done over the course of its of its existence, as well as future possibilities for the soul. Mm. So um, I totally resonated with it, and I just kept hearing blocks of thought that were not mine. Mm. And so I just began to write them. At first, I was writing them, and then I decided to actually study. And I studied at the um, through the Linda House Center for Akashic, uh, Akashic Studies out of Chicago, and um, and that's where I I worked on my own. I you know op- I mean all she has us do is open our records like crazy because when we open our own records and access that divine, it's an entourage of divine energies that are that are overseeing our own soul's journey, cho- our soul's chosen journey. So the idea is that our souls, each soul chooses its journey in each incarnation. And when I started to read about that, I knew it. I just knew it. My being knew it. So I knew I was supposed to be doing this. Hmm. And um, and what happens is like, well, sometimes people get a little confused about that because they'll say, well, what do you mean? I, I came into a family that was a creepy family. My soul manifested that? No. It's a bigger. It's a bigger overview of what the soul is doing, in the, in a lifetime. And we get to discover that when we are in our records. When it, I get well for for me, when I'm working with someone and myself, I will hear. Sometimes I get past lives. They'll show me a lifetime, not in a year, because there's no time in quantum. In quantum divine, there's no time. And so they'll, you know, I'll hear you were this, or I'll see people in woods in ancient times, I'll see them as warriors, as leaders. And the idea is energy, we know energy never dies. It just morphs, it shifts and changes like, like a snake. So the, think of, this is really cool. We have in our own DNA, in the essence of our soul, it contains every lifetime we've ever lived. So we can literally, once we discover a particular lifetime, we can tap into that lifetime by just intention. It's really cool. Um, like, and activate that, that a little bit more. Like, how can I activate that? Like if I, so for, so for example, um, if somebody gets a diagnosis of cancer, let's say mm-hmm. um, they can go into their records and they may discover that, I mean, we, our soul's been, it's the same soul incarnating over and over. So we can discover a particular lifetime that that soul existed in and they lived as maybe a human being. And, um, there was no cancer. That means the energy of no cancer, because it didn't exist in that lifetime, is still with us because DNA never dies. So the DNA, because you know we're so used to thinking linearly in our third dimensional realm. Our minds want to figure it out, logical, logical, I don't get it kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Well, if we just relax that and go, oh, cool, what if? See, I have a really amazing like imagination. I always have, and it's probably why I went into television and now I'm writing and I'm writing fictional stuff. So the records, the divine uses my imagination in, in a direct link to the person's soul. It's a match to the person's soul. They, they use my way of speaking and my imagination. Kind of happens with all healers, mm-hmm. really. They're using, the, the outer essences are using our bodies and our sense of ourselves to heal, right? So if we know when we discover another lifetime, and let's say in this lifetime, we'd like to be more, I don't know, more warrior-like, or we want to experience love in a certain way more Mm -hmm. or self-love more, we can discover a past lifetime through the records where we had immense self-love. So how is it done? It's what happens, It's this is just the divine the most amazing part of divine. Once we talk about it, the divine moves on the spoken word. So once we have that conversation and a client or myself, I open my records and I will see things and go, whoa. Once we go, whoa, that's it. Mm. It is literally that simple. And then something starts to shift. And of course it is is, um, intention. It is knowing. It is- is it, it energy? is energy yeah. and it's believing also not belief like a belief system, but it's sort of like going, 
you know, if we could just be wide open to the possibilities of, hey, not everything, there are things going on that maybe we don't see with our eyes and we can't figure out. Yeah. It's and not, I've, yeah, yeah it's, not being, it's not being a reductionist and re- reducing it down to the, the mechanical parts, right? It's, exactly. It's exactly. being like an idealist and having an open mind and this possibly could have happened, right? Like that's, that's like I, <clears throat> that's how I look at it. Everything, right? Like I know, but, mm-hmm. but, but I have this feeling like I've had visions. I've had, I've had experiences where I've had conversations with, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm channeling something. Um, I've had uh, mm-hmm. um, just experiences in my life that I can't explain. Like, right. Like I'll go into these creative States and I'll, I'll, I'll write a paper for school or something, you know, like I'm the mm-hmm. old guy going back to school and I'll write a paper and I'll read the paper after it's graded. And I'm like, who the heck wrote this? I didn't write yep, this. That's it. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, That's I'll it. have uh, deja vu. Deja vu is basically mm-hmm. cognition, right? Or pre- premonition, whatever it is, where you predict the future. Like, I know people have had this and a lot of people are like, you know, it's, it's deja vu. I'm just, you know, I've been here before. And I spoke with somebody who was a psychic and was like, yeah, that's you, that you're just realizing that you predicted the future where you're at. Like, and I'm like, what? I'm like, that's just a thing. And it's just mm-hmm. staying open-minded to that. But I've stumbled upon this idea of, <clears throat> um, because I've had conversations with who I feel is God. And I've noticed the fact that there's a lot of suffering, a lot of suffering because of the ego, and a lot of suffering because, um, mm-hmm. you know, people forget why, you know, why we're here, really. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> they get caught up in the, the Western mindset of hustle and bustle and a lot of stress and anxiety and um, disorders. And, you know, I've asked God in my, in my way, how can I help the suffering? And he's like, use your voice. Okay. I'm, I'm using my voice in the podcast but I'm also running daily. I'm also doing things that better myself, but I feel like I'm projecting that energy out into the universe. Mm -hmm. And that energy is a collective consciousness. I call it super. It's not like I I didn't name this. I don't have a patent on the name, super Mm -hmm. consciousness or collective consciousness that I think that I'm adding that energy to, or my consciousness is I'm leveling up my energy to receive higher information. So that way I can become better and project higher energy out into the universe. And then, contribute to the world in that way like i'm never going to end suffering but i can at least project better higher energy to help somebody else like i might not have the right things to say but something about that moment either my energy that i'm vibing or something that i say in an instant it's going to help them with their with their suffering i had a uh, akashic record reading was it last week it was last week Mm. and some of the stuff was just pretty phenomenal um they, he and mentioned that uh, what helped me in this life was I needed to balance the scale a little bit more. Like I'm one side of me is very stoic and one side of me is very um, lighthearted and loving and energetic. And I need to balance that scale because, uh, you know, recently I've been too much of the stoic side of me. And then when I start mm-hmm. balancing that scale, going more so into lightheartedness, that's when things will start opening up for me success or whatever you want to term that I'm not really worried about that. I'm more so worried about, I don't even say I'm worried of it, but worried about it. But my mission that I want to achieve is helping the suffering that is out there, like helping people realize that we're here um, for the curriculum like of life and to how to develop as a soul and to awaken, right. To, to mm-hmm. wake up out mm-hmm. of this, Mm-hmm. sleep that we're in um mm-hmm. i don't know I, I i just i'm really into what you're doing and what's really fascinating to me is that you were a director um successful director you know you're mm-hmm. still doing that right and yeah. how like t- talk to me about that right like when you started having or i guess when you felt comfortable enough to to put this book out there like did you were you nervous about that like because of what people were going to think of you or people were going to mm-hmm. say or anything like that? No, I mean, I'm lucky enough to have chosen a career where anything goes really. I mean, mm-hmm. and, you know, think about, you know, storytelling. No. I mean, look at Harry Potter, <laughs> Harry Potter. I mean, she, she was just wanting to write stories for her children. That was it. And look what happened. Yeah. Um, 
So what's interesting is I, I've learned so much through, by the way, thank you for sharing what you're sharing about what you just shared about your mission and who you are. Um, because it is, it is directly in line with what I always hear from the Akashic realm. One of the many things which is, you know, we raise, when we raise our vibration, we contribute to the expansion of the universe and the cosmos. And what the records have shared with me is, and I, I resonate with this, is that that is why we're here. We're here to participate in expansion. And of course, love is at the center of everything. We know that. And it gets tossed around a lot, but it's huge, mm -hmm. you know, the idea of love. Um, I was also getting a strong hit, and then I'll go back to your question. I don't know what to call it, a hit, um, about did anything come up in your in the Akashic reading that you had about, a pa did any past life come up for you? Not that I'm not in your records right now, but I don't know why I just got a hit um, about you having ended suffering for many, many, many in some other lifetime. You uh, actually he know said, that already. He mm -hmm. said, um, he said that I would, so we talked about, I think it was one past life where he, I was a, a wise man turned king or something mm -hmm. like that. And mm -hmm. that was basically it. And he said that, that, that life, that former life was helping me now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really, really interesting. And then I was going to ask too, have, have you, have you in your entire life been, uh, triggered by suffering and wanting to help end suffering yeah you have yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i mean uh, so i've always had this <clears throat> this heart i've always had this heart right like um mm -hmm. my suffering is is that i i i'm too hard on myself i don't self-love enough mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um right and i've always wanted to like i've always had this this i guess need for the stage or like this type of work mm -hmm. um but i've never had that confidence to speak in public or speak in front of people because i never thought i was smart enough i didn't think that i had anything worth to say um very scared but i had these natural abilities to lead um i don't know where they came from and that's why i was asking them i was like you know in this life i know what past life can can i pull from that would help me out in this one and that's when he said the king part of it but i feel like i do have these natural abilities to lead but it's like the suffering part of it is this i know how i suffered because i was so caught up in this idea that i had to create this podcast to be something that it wasn't like the business model of it like i had mm -hmm. to get sponsorships i had to do this and i was i was working my ass off to to create something that it it wasn't supposed to be. And I hit so much resistance and I didn't know why I was hitting resistance and it tore me apart. It tore me apart. It tore, you know, my, my family, it was just, you know, we were in a bad spot. And, um, when I started doing work on myself, when I started to become more conscious, more aware about my spirituality, about, you know, reading more books, you know, um, one of my, the publicist that I work with, Sarah Scarlett, she came out of my life out of nowhere. I had no idea where she came from. Like I, I didn't reach out to her and she started giving me some more mystical authors, more um, esoteric cool. books mm -hmm. to read. Right. And I started mm -hmm. reading them and mm -hmm. I was like triggered, you know, psychology, I'm ready to go after it. And then I started reading more and more and more. And now I'm just consumed with it. Just this higher learning, this higher self that I want to connect with that I feel like I can connect with. Um, when I meditate and it's, you know, now I'm talking to Paul Selig and the guides and I'm talking to you. I'm talking to, I'm reading books about, um, you know, Ram Das and, and his, his outlook on life. And it's helped me, you know, identify the ego and see what that is. You know, like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I am, uh, <clears throat> I am at a spot now where I, I see where I was at and I knew how much pain it, it had caused me. And I want to help others that are there that can't see it because they're asleep. And I mm -hmm. know that I'm not going to be able to say, any, I'm not going to be able to shake them out of that sleep. It's going to be something in their lives when they're ready to hear it. And I just hope that something that I've done, some energy that I put out into the universe is going to be able to contribute to that awakening. 
Yeah, so the key is knowing that we are that source that we are so filled around and about, we are that source that, you know, that's the new, the, the new message. It sounds like it's not new, but it really is a new message. That is, we are that, you know, God, source, universe, whatever. When you said the publicist sort of came out of the universe gave you that obviously because you were you were a match to it it was an energetic match boom there it was there she was um and so this is who you are so this is what we learn and the records remind us because again the records are literally you know when we're talking when here's the thing when we're at least in my work when we open our records or, another, or, I'm, or I have a client and the client's records are open, often the client will say to me, oh, you're so good. This is what was amazing. And I say, well, you are because <laughs> you are speaking to the divine aspect of yourself. And I am just the carrier. I'm hearing it. I'm taking it's, you know, because because quantum has to squeeze into third dimensional, into imagination, into speech. Same thing with you. So you're obviously connecting up. And I kept hearing the word, you're connecting Trey with the field. Mm -hmm. It's the field. And the field is where everything exists. Yeah. Right. But, but we there's don't doubt see to it. that. There's so much doubt. Like I doubted myself. Like I don't, I, yeah. I like, oh, so, so did I. Oh my yeah. gosh. Oh but my gosh. I'm like, I'm going nuts. Like, I don't know. I feel like, so did am I. I the, am I the one who's saying this right now? Am I the one that's, oh my gosh. These words? You know what? Mm -hmm. I almost didn't do the work. I almost didn't move into studying, uh, becoming a practitioner because. Uh, and then what happened was I would open my records and then sit at my computer and this stuff would come out. And when I would share it with my either partner or friends, whatever, they kept saying to me, this is, this is amazing. And I used to say to them, maybe it's just me. I'm maybe I'm making this up. I don't know. Um, and they would say to me, but you don't even speak this way. We know you this, there's something you're tapping into here and please pay attention. So I don't know if that's happened for you, but I also would hear things and I do, that are not coming from my mind. I know it. And I'll be like, whoa, but now, so I, so I resisted it. I really did. You know, it's interesting. The three absolutes of the Akashic records are fear not, judge not, and resist not. Those are really big ones, hmm. right? We, we don't have to be afraid of it. And there's no, imagine this, there's no possible way that you would be absorbing, resonating, attracting to you the, 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 this area of where you can't get enough of it if that were not already who you are. You don't have to become anything. You're already that and you're being, and the universe is just giving you here, this is who you are. This is who you are. This is who you are. And then I guess like me, I realized, okay, I get to be a third dimensional person because I remember hearing something on you were sharing on one of your podcasts about being um, from a blue collar family. Mm -hmm. So am I, mm -hmm. um, New York city brothers, a father who was a plumber in New York, very blue collar. Um, and I was the only girl and I was just like, Whoa, but you know what? Or, and I should say it has become so important because now I'm so rooted in third dimension that um, I'm not, I don't go flitting off lofty La La Land. I'm not up in La La Land. I'm, I'm very rooted as my family was in 3D. Mm -hmm. And so I know how to speak 3D, yet it's totally non 3D coming in, right? So I imagine mm -hmm. that's what's going on for you as well. And it's great that you're doing this work and being this voice. It's really great that you're doing this. Yeah, it, it's it's great. I mean, I, I, I really feel a high vibration when I, when I have conversations mm -hmm. like this, when I connect, cause I can't, you're right. I can't get enough of it. Like just the idea of being connected to something that, that, <clears throat> because like, I don't know, it's just, you know, you grew up and you're, you know, programmed to think that you gotta live your, you know, you gotta, can't do this, can't do that. You gotta be oh, perfect, yeah. you know? Yep. And then like yep. to think that get a job, get a job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Society, like I felt terrible. Like I was 21. I had dropped out of college mm -hmm. and society was like, you're a bum. You're a bum. Like you're, you need to go get a job, get married, have kids. Society was telling me this, not just, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. just my parents, but everybody around me. 
and I never really explored what I really liked. You know, I never really explored mm-hmm. what really fired me up. And I didn't know, you know, like, I don't, I don't regret my path. Like it led me to where I needed to be right, Absolutely. right now here. Right. Like it yeah. taken, it has taken a long time for me to awaken, but once you awaken, like there's no going back, like there is no faking it. And like, Oh man, I, once you see wizard, the wizard of Oz, there's no closing that curtain. Like there is no, there's not. You know, here's a like, suggestion. Um, you always were awake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because the idea, this is another thing that the records impart constantly, and it probably is in the book, hey, it's in the book, is that we have perceptions. Perceptions get us in trouble. We perceive things. And, and they always, and the records always remind us that there is no right and wrong. There's just choice. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and we are, you, you already were that. There, like what they've said to me a lot is there is no you be you become awake. You already are awake. It's just now you're awake in a different way because the world is changing and you're applying it in a different way. And this is the other thing that's really cool that they talk about a lot is a lot of us think, and I did, um, I mean, I'm a living and breathing example of like garbage that we struggle with. And I, I dug in and listened to the records and went and had my ahas and went, oh my God, I think I get this. And now I can, because I'm a living example of it, I'm probably doing the right thing by being, you know, by opening records, um, is that when we have different parts of our, we call them careers, that's a perception too, by the way. Often I have clients, including me, going, well, I did this for those 10 years and then I did that. And I've had people ask me, and I'll get back to your original question here, which was like, well, you were in television and now you're doing this, like, huh? Well, (laughs) In the beginning, I was like, what do I do? Do I let go of that career and I go over and do this? That was an old perception that I had that I grew up with, by the way, in in belief systems around me. No, everything we do, and you actually said it, you said it leads to now, it all plays a part in the soul's journey. Every aspect of everything in our lives is a specific chunk of energy that, that, uh, that is always a part of our soul's journey. There's never, I made a mistake, now that's over there. Ooh, look what I did, that was the wrong choice in my career. And then what we do is when we open people's, when I open people's records, we look at those parts of their career like a mind map and bring the energy forward and go, oh my gosh, look, so you did that. Imagine if you took that and now married it to this right now, what does it look like? And I, I mean, there've been new things created, new brands created through people in their records because they didn't know that they, that, that, they, that they were compartmentalizing aspects of their career. And we get to look at them as energy and bring them together. And all of a sudden this new unique something comes out of, it, it becomes birthed, right? Mm-hmm. So what happened for me was, okay, television, television, that's storytelling, it's creativity. I always had a sense as I sense right now that you have always been awake I always had a sense of a very powerful essence, divine, a field, whatever you want to call it, source, always. And I was always living that and I wasn't knowing that I was living it. I was always caring for people. I resonate with you, what you said about suffering. I actually, and I don't know if this is true for you, I remember into this, well, it's a little less now that I've been working in the records because I understand things a little better. But growing up when other people got hurt, or when animals got hurt or children got hurt, it hurt me more than if I got hurt. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you've experienced this. And then when I, when I was you know, in my twenties and thirties, I was like, what's wrong with me? Something's wrong with me because nobody's hurting me, but I feel I'm ripped apart by this. And it's humanity hurting humanity. And it would just make me crazy and upset me. Um, that's because where we have, well, I learned from past lives what I was in past lives. So you came up with the sage, the king. A sage is gonna be able to be a high vibrational being, right? And see, and if we can see everything, we're gonna probably feel it, especially if we're in bodies, (laughs) we're gonna feel it. And suffering is a tough one. It's really tough because we just want it to go away. And we want people to feel better, right? Mm -hmm. So I realized that even in my work, 
working as a director, I was making people feel better, even if we were doing some romance scene or a shooting, a shooting scene, we, the people were feeling better. They wanted to work with me and I didn't know why. I just thought it was because I love what I'm doing and I love people. No, it was because I was living, breathing that essence and I already had it. And I didn't know I already had it until I started working more in the records. So what we discover by working in our records or visiting our records is that we are divine. We are exactly the same as that divine source that we go, whoa, you know, God, whatever source, light. We are that. We are the light. The light is us. We are that. Hmm. Right. And sometimes if we start trying to think about it, well, I don't feel it. Well, that's maybe because the mind comes in and then the ego conscious and the collective ego conscious that Eckhart Tolle talks about that ego conscious pops in and it just, he, he refers to it as a monster and giggles. Sure. It really is that ego conscious, not the healthy ego. It's tricky. It yeah. can just sneak in there. And then all of a sudden you have low self-worth, a little yeah. nugget of it that can make us second guess ourselves or whatever. So what, so what, what happened for me was when I first dove into the records, I was doing less television, of course, I wasn't worried what people would think really, because I wasn't actually contracted at that point. It was a time out in my life. I'd moved from New York to out here I'm from New York originally came out here. And the, sh the last show I had been working on, which was um, general hospital, um, this, that soap, um, it was, it was, uh, no, what happened was um, a different, you know, it was a uh, upper management change and my contract was up and they were making changes. So I went like, boom, bouncing out after 25, almost 30 years of never having that happen. And I went, whoa, now it was the greatest gift ever because I have to say that all those years working at a studio or working for a network, I'll say a particular network, um, I wasn't a match to, my soul felt like I was missing something. I think I've written that in my website something was missing for me. I didn't like how people were being treated. It was all about money, making money, making money. Everything was every minute that we were taping, you have to go faster, faster, faster. And when actors wanted to breathe into a scene as a director, I wasn't allowed to let them because there was no time because it was money. And I was just sort of like shredding on some level, didn't know it, kept going because of my blue collar. Yeah. You know, my father used to say, I'll die with my boots on. That was his saying all the time. And I think I had that from growing up in it. Like, no, I got to keep going. Yeah. And then finally the gift was, oh, we're going to do some changes here. And then the records popped in and I went, okay. But I always wanted to be storytelling, directing. And then the records told me or imparted to me that what they showed me what I was, was that my record showed me a writer as a writer. And I, and I remember writing, you know, I'm writing my records and hearing and I, I said, no, I'm not. Like, I'm talking back to the records. I think it's so funny. Like, no, I'm not. And I said, I'm a director. And they were like, your records, your soul's journey shows you writing. And so it took me a while, not just writing the book. That was part of it. Actually, they've given me three books to write. It's not just the books. It was, it was other stuff. And then I realized one day, well, what do I really know how to do? I know how to do television. And so I wrote a teen series because I'm very concerned about teens and what's going on. I wrote a sci-fi. I tapped into all the things I know really well. It happens to be ETs and UFO stuff. Um, and not in, a, not in a kooky way, but in a very serious way. And, um, and that's another conversation, but I just, I was like, what do I know real well? Mm -hmm. And it was sci-fi, young people, storytelling and directing. And I blended them all together through my work in the records, by the way. And I wrote this teen series that's now being pitched. Um, I'm hoping it's going to get on Netflix. It's, it's uh, scripted. And then I also wound up writing another, a screenplay recently um, and based on a book. And it's uh, the untold story of Mary Magdalene. However, it's not a biblical story. It's um, all these modern storylines popped in in my sleep time. The universe just gave me. So once I said yes to what I was receiving in my own records about being a writer, let's say, I finally, and I have to tell you, Trey, it wasn't immediate. I was just like, 
I'm not a writer. Ooh, like what? And I just kept resisting it, resisting it. Mm -hmm. And then like just one day it was like, I said, yes. Once I said yes, somebody came to me, wanted me to write a screenplay. <laughs> it just wow. happened, right? Yes. Because when we say yes to what our soul has already chosen, everything opens up and it's easy. And I was going to ask you earlier, when you were talking about sort of absorbing as much metaphysical, you know, um, material and high conscious beings and what they, do you lose time? Do you like, oh, yeah, all said, absolutely. right. See, that's another, that's the other, um, that's the other, what's the word? That's how like, we know. We like know in, we're doing the thing flow. we're supposed to do. Yeah, it's like flow st a flow state that I get into. It's like, oh, yeah. You know, and then whole, you don't even know like what happened? Where did, oh my yeah. gosh, five hours went by. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my right. wife is so tired of uh, me buying books on uh, <laughs> on Amazon <laughs> metaphysical stuff. You know, just yeah, that's insane. great though. Good for you. Um, because I, I just uh, I I love the idea of just being able to tap into that source. Like I just love being able to mm -hmm. receive things, information, or a better feeling, higher vibration to to help others. I mean, like you said. I, man, I, I love kids. Like I, whenever I see a kid, cause I have three, I just immediately feel my kids, right? Like whenever I see a kid suffering or something, man, it hits me right in the heart. So if, I don't know who was, who, who was, I was reading with one time, but they were saying there was a lot of, um, you know, I'll give back at some point in my life. And I hope so, because like, I really want to, uh, give back to like you know uh, some kids and like with education and, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know food and clothes and I just want to give back so much to, to the world and the unit like I just want to give back to like the kids like I just feel like this strong pull um, to help them because I see my kids in them right like I, I sure uh, there's a couple authors that I, I've I've read and they talk about their journeys over east and they talk about the Himalayas and some of the, the mountain children over there and their education is you know not what it's supposed to be and it's <clears throat> um, I don't know if I'll ever make it over there but I want to contribute in some way whether it's a foundation or something like because I see my kids and I see um, um, I don't take for granted what they have but I, I feel like you know I see a child and I see a young soul and I see a young being that's just starting out and I know it's their path where they're at but yeah, any, that's any the, way mm -hmm. I can help them along that path, you know, like I just, mm -hmm. I would feel better. Yeah. And it's tough when we do know like the law of attraction and that when we know it's, uh, that soul's path, it's tough because it's like, okay, now how much do I, mm -hmm. am I, inter yeah, exactly. how much exactly. am I interfering, but, but, you know, or, and the, you know, I was just going to remind you that the platform that you have, um, lends itself beautifully to other creative ways uh, that you can be making those, uh, supporting that, supporting it. You know, this is something else I've come to feel and see and learn is the old, the old systems, because a lot of the systems are broken and they're busting apart and we know this mm -hmm. and they're toppling. And so um, this is a, a very exciting time. So the, the way of giving back has been traditionally, it still works, you know, to wait until we're in a position and then we can give the way we know, whether it's money or, you know, other creative things that maybe you launch or an organization you launch. Mm -hmm. However, the platform that you have right now, there's so much information about people who are suffering that we need to hear. Because when people, you know, I think, I really feel that <clears throat> the only reason one of the reasons <clears throat> that more people are not helped on our planet is because people just don't know. We don't, we're not gonna see it on television. We're not going to see it on news. News is failing us right now. It needs to be reinvented or thrown upside down. Uh, you're not and gonna see it in universities either, just because of the- No, you're you not know. gonna see it in universities, that's right. So you're not, so most likely the systems aren't going to uh, uh, alert or let people know, but, the, what you have using your voice um oh my gosh i don't know if you are doing that but I, there's an opportunity to like just build a month around something or uh you know a um a, around a topic a particular country mm -hmm. and 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 not that you have to stop what you're doing and only focus on the himalayas let's say and these kids 
not not at all. You can blend what you have. You could bring spiritual people in with, sure. you know, or spiritual people bring from those areas. Bring awareness to it, right? Bring Absolutely. awareness to it. Absolutely. Uh. Because when, that, when people, and podcasting especially, when people are listening, they're like, they their hearts get activated and then they want to mm. know what to do. Um, and and it, it's interesting because part of the other, and I'll share this, because I think it's important to share this because we're talking, we're both on the same wavelength and I'm very happy about this with, with what you're saying and you're tapping into something about me, which is this. One of the other reasons that my book got put on hold a little bit is a very dear friend of mine's child, she's six years old, may have, uh, been molested by the dad, maybe. Mm. I'm going to say maybe because we're on a podcast. Sure. Here's the thing. The system is not investigating it. They're mm. in the courts and everything. They're not investigating. And the child has disclosed to me. She's like a um, daughter to me, a second mm -hmm. daughter, a, a daughter. And so I'm learning about now the whole United States and what's going on and that the court systems, I'm, I've got data I, this one heartfelt situation that's breaking me apart and my wife, we're breaking apart over this is, um, is a bigger issue mm -hmm. and nobody's talking about it. So we have judges that are leaning towards the wrong parent because there are antiquated laws and they have to follow those laws. Um, thousands of children return to the abuser by the courts in 55,000 a year in the United States. So you know, I, I'm, I guess I'm using the thing I'm saying right now by saying it in this conversation with bringing you, awareness to that, yeah. bringing awareness to it. It's just, if, I think if pe more people would know, and I'm actually trying to figure out, do I do a, a zoom show? Like, what do I do? Uh, television shows not, they're not going to buy a show like that. Yeah, no, they're no. just not there yet. No, they're not there yet. Uh, the networks, but you know, it's, it's troubling to me. And how about sex trafficking? Huge. Yeah. Yeah. It keep, you know, and people will, you'll have conversations and I don't know if you're having conversations and it'll come up in conversations with colleagues of mine. They'll be like, oh my God, yes, it's horrible. Well, <laughs> what are we doing about it? Nothing because that's Nothing. how, that's how people, you know, they, they get it. <laughs> that's how they watch their porn. It's on the, 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 that's right. you know what I mean? Like, cause you're on the dark web. watching on the dark yes. web and it's and these girls that are getting trafficked out of New York, LA, these big cities, Miami. Yeah. So I Mexico. brought those storylines. I brought exactly those storylines right into the series with it's sci-fi. So it'll be like a stranger things. Um, it's like stranger things meets 13 reasons why it's like mm -hmm. that kind of, you know, um, and the sci-fi is a different aspect of sci-fi that hasn't been done yet. So I did that because I know how to entertain and I'm like, okay, I know how to entertain. And that's what the record showed me where I thought my entertainment part of my life was going to be over. And now I'm going to be here and do spiritual work. No, they're coming together. And that is a new message that keeps coming up, which is that, um, you know, people separate. We tend to, in the past, I grew up separating the spiritual practices from life when really like the Akashic records show us like they're a breathing essence of like our truth and who we are from moment to moment the records show us that so spirituality and life are the same thing they're not separate and i think that there is this tendency look at even books there are books about life and like uh, life like the seven steps to success or something and yeah. then there's books on spirituality but they're they're the same they're now together um we live life as spiritual and spiritual as life you know, taking actions and doing what we call work. I don't even like that word work. It's experience, right? I guess. Yeah, it's experience. experience. That's right. And it's, it's joy and it's living what we've chosen to, to come and do. And when we are, when it's not working or the, the signs when we're off our soul's path are sometimes illness certainly unhappiness, broken relationships, all the things that people come to therapy for, all of those things are just simply signs that we're a little bit off. I, I describe the being off our soul's journey as like a sprocket that is out of its groove slightly. And when we visit the records and we're having conversation within the Akashic records, 
it just gently goes right back in. And, and it's not, it's not like consciously. It's like all of a sudden the client goes away and then I hear from them a week later and they say, oh my gosh, I listened back to my reading and I have all these things that are happening. That's just because it went snap right in, nice and easy. That's, mm. that's the power of divine. I give it to divine. Divine has its way. Wow. That, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's about balance. Like I'm trying to learn mm -hmm. how to do that balancing. Um, so I guess you, you record and then allow them to have it. And that's great. I think that's cool that you, I you guess know, you go really, on Zoom. Yeah, I do Zoom. And well, I used to be in, do it in person. I mean, one week when yeah, I could, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm in Ojai. Um, you know, um, um, what's interesting too, is the records, um, the, the energies, they're not, they're not ghosts or beings. They're literally light energies. They say constantly and repeatedly that when we listen back, or if we've written the reading, read back, when we listen back to our recording there, it's different, not because we've changed. It's literally different. And I've had people write back to me and go, you're right. It wasn't the same. It's like another reading. So there, that's because divine is timeless because mm. there is no time. Well, it's a, it's a, a frequency, right? Like you, like mm -hmm. when you have a conversation, you get that heart center activated. I get that heart center activated because we're talking yes. about things that we're very passionate about and that we're connected to. And people that don't know that vibration that we're talking about raising your vibration. I feel it in my heart. I don't, Mary, is that the same for you? Like you feel like yes. heart energy vibrate and warm and feel good. Um, Cause people have asked me like, what are you talking about when you say, you know, your vibration or frequency that, that's mm -hmm. the heart center mm -hmm. is like just exploding. Yes, it is. Um, and when we're discussing things, when you, you know, I have my reading from last week and I was looking mm -hmm. at it and, you're right. It is different. Right. But because I think we come down off of that high. Right. So we get back into the low frequency, the, the that's right. The, the plane or the what is it? The the plane it's of denser. forms is dense, you know, and then we yes. look at this, which is still resonating because it's this is like when I talk about me working out or doing things, the podcast, putting that, that high energy out there. It's all you cannot you, you cannot take that away. Right. So when I look at this reading, I see the, the high energy that's associated with it. And I go right to, back to that place. Of course, because it's who you are, because that is that reading was and, and still is who you are. So when you reread it, you're reactivating the essence, that field mm. that is representative of your soul. That's mm. why that happens. Mm. That's why it's great to have those, you know, and it's immediate, too. If we start thinking about it, then we become it's funny. It's just the mind is tricky. When we start thinking about stuff, um, Eckhart talks about this too, then the, the vibration gets denser, right? When we start trying to analyze something or start think about it. it. Yeah. Yes. We're trying like to figure out why. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Why? This mm -hmm. is because you need to know, you need to learn a different way, not the way that we've been taught. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who has been the most inspirational for you? as far as an author or a spiritual teacher? Well, you know, it's funny. I think sometimes when that question is asked, people go way back. They try and they want to go back because mm -hmm. it's, you know, they're thinking time. It's okay to say yourself. You can say me. Oh, no, no, no. It's not that it's me, <laughs> but it's more recent in my life. It's um, Andrew Harvey. I've, I've never heard of him. Oh, you will love Andrew Harvey. Andrew Harvey has coined the phrase sacred activism. Hmm. Amazing words to put together because activism, I never resonated with activism because activism in itself uh, screams no at something. Stop doing that, right? You march down the street with signs or whatever or yell at people for doing something. That's activism. Sacred activism and how he describes it. Um, he's written like, he's a mystic, was born in India, schooled in England went back to India, then started studying with gurus. He had his own Dark Night of the Soul. There's one of, one of his 30 something books is written on that. And what he says is identify what breaks your heart. It's really good question. Mm. What breaks your heart the most? And when you do, mm. gather with at least six people, a minimum, well, like about six people and create a, 
um, what's he called, a cell, of, uh, a cell of grace and begin to take actions around that, right? And, you know, that's sacred activism. And that's one thing he talks about, but he's also um, studied Rumi. He's written, one of his books is about Rumi. Um, you will love Andrew Harvey. He's, and there's lots on YouTube with him mm -hmm. speaking. Um, an amazing journey. And he's what the reason I resonate so much with him is because um, he's so passionate, and that's how I am. And it's mm -hmm. almost like when I started to read Andrew Harvey and hear him, it validated for me how ridiculously passionate I will get for something like a child. Because there are some people that will say, "Okay, well, let's sit with this." That's not me, and it could be the blue collar part of me. You know, my father's heart on your sleeve kind of thing. Yeah. I, yeah my like heart, my heart is on my sleeve a hundred percent. Like me too. I wear I mean, my it's heart. It's like on. that. It's like, it's like, it's me too. Boom. And you know what? I used to get criticized for that growing up. And I also got, I also got criticized. And I wonder if other people have had this for thinking everybody's you always, Mary, you always think everyone's too nice. First of all, what now, now that I know what I know, I, I actually was, I felt really bad about that. I thought something was wrong with me because I always saw the good in everyone. Mm -hmm. And I still do. I don't understand hatred. I don't, I never, under, and my father was a racist. I never, I argued with him every day. I don't understand racism. I just never, I don't like, I don't have the gene. I don't get it, right? And so I, I don't like running down the street and screaming no at something because that doesn't work. It just makes the other people more angry. But if we dig into our heart first <laughs> and allow our hearts to tell us what it is, first of all, that breaks our hearts the most, and then to sit with it and allow like the ideas to come through on what to, how to take actions. When we do that with knowing that we're divine, that's the, that's the key. That's the other thing that Andrew Harvey talks about. He talks about the fact that the human race may not survive. We're not through this yet. Gaia will survive. The planet will be here. Humanity might not. And he talks about that from the perspective of talking to scientists and, you know, people who do know, like a mm -hmm. Greg Braden. Um, but he but he says, until we know that we are divine and experience our own divine, not holy, divine, it's going to be kind of messy. Once we know we're divine, that's sacred activism. This is the key to sacred activism. Activism without knowing we're divine is we just go around screaming at everybody to stop it. Um, well, give we'll, some, give them an example of being divine and not holy. You know what I mean? Like the difference. Oh, okay. Well, holy feels like it is. Um, your greater holy feels like it's. It, it, this is my perspective now. It's a lot of times it's really it's attached to religions. But like holy is like, you're special. That's what it feels like to me. Like holy is special. Spiritual, like holy is like, whoa, up here. And spiritual to me feels like we're all the same. Mm -hmm. In the eyes of source. All the same. Every single second of every day. Even the murderer. Even the rapist. The hardest thing for people to hear. Right? Right? And it's really hard for people to have compassion for those kinds of people that are doing horrible things. I'm not, I'm not saying we all should. We're not all here to do that. Um, however, in the eyes of divine, we are all the same. And once I discovered that in my work, I went, oh my gosh, all these years I was feeling like crap because I was wearing my heart on my sleeve and thinking everyone was in their essence. I, I do believe that the essence of human beings, the essence of who we are is divine, no matter who what color race and where we've been. I believe that. And divine shows me that. I mean, that's what I keep hearing. Right. And it's a tough one for some people. That's okay. Because that's what creates suffering is, well, what creates suffering, I think, is our not knowing we're divine. And you were tapping into that in another way earlier that, yeah. you know, helping people see that they're really okay. You're really okay. Well, I mean, I had a brother. suffering. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, go I had ahead. a brother who was uh, my, 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 I was so close to him and he's on the other side now. And he was addicted to heroin his whole life. And he stole from people. He stole from us. He had, 
he was an artist, uh, paint, uh, you know, he painted beautiful paintings and he was so damaged from when he was a child that um, he didn't know that he was love. He didn't know he was love. And I couldn't even give him that. And we were very, very close. Mm -hmm. um, and he had the heart, his heart was the size of the cosmos. He would give the shirt off his back to anyone and yet he was broken, right? And so I saw in him when other people were saying he's a bum, he's a no nothing, whatever. Even when I, and he was a lot older than me when I was a little, a little girl, I saw the good in him, I always did. And I got yelled at for that. <laughs> you know, like I was stupid and you mm -hmm. don't know, you trust everyone. And it's like, well, I kind of would rather trust people and have awareness. Now I have awareness, meaning I'm not just gonna blindly trust everyone or rather I trust people to begin with, I'll say that. Um, and then, and now with awareness, I can just take a few seconds before I jump into something with someone. We well, trust the fact that we're all on, at a soul level. <clears throat> we're all we're at this higher. We we are all, all all a part of this higher source. You trust that fact. Yes, I do. The thing that I'm aware of is that everyone, not everyone's awake, right? So they people say right. that their egos. They still think that yes. they are they are they are these bodies. They are their jobs. They are their roles that they're yes. currently playing. I they agree. get lost in that, mm -hmm. which can be dangerous because they grow up with a lot of trauma. They grow up with a lot of hurt and they think they are that hurt and yes. mm -hmm. they can't get out of that because they don't know what they truly are. And they right. grow up and they become these things that society says is are bombs and they mm -hmm. can't ever grow out of that because um, they are just, they're hurting so bad. I know. And I agree. And they, they don't know their love. They don't know their love. No. So I get it. I know, I know what you're talking about when you say you trust, you trust them at the soul level because you know that what it is, they, they're, they're a part of this higher source. It's just, it's just the ego and, this, and the role that we don't, that we need to be aware of and that where, mm -hmm. where people are because they don't, they don't know where they're at. Like, yep. Like we actually had, it's a crazy story. I actually had my, my car stolen out of my driveway and we had just built a, built a home and, you know, it, some city people came up and took it back to the city and we found it. We we're lucky, lucky enough to find it. And I felt nothing but anger at first, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anger. And just like, how dare they? But then like, the more that I think about it, the more that I can kind of, you know, get over that and just think about where did they come from? Like, how did they grow up? Like, how did they, what experiences did they have? Like the anger falls away and it's like, as long as nobody got hurt, like I'm good, like whatever it is, what it is like they're on their journey, they're on their path. But at first, like the ego is like, how dare they take that? How I, I work so hard for that, you know? And then like mm -hmm. the more that I step back out of that, out of that role that is, that is Trey. And, and I look at it from a higher source, I can say, they probably had it rougher than I did. And they're definitely, definitely not awake. And they definitely are hurting and they're definitely coming from a place that is not love. And you know what? No one got hurt and it, it is what it is. You got it back. The universe gave it back to you. So it's just like, you know, and I got, I got, I look at things a whole lot differently now. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm not, I understand not, but, that, but it's mm -hmm. not, the, it's not a this place of I'm better than you. It's not that it's like, I see you for what you are. I see you that you're, you're mm -hmm. the soul. You're the another soul. I see you as Mary. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. that you're on a different spot. You're in a different path and, and I feel you. And I, I'm just going to sit here with my heart, my heart open to you and you can hate me. You can cuss me. You can do whatever you want, but I just know who you are. Yeah. That's really beautiful. That's very beautiful. It's compassion. It sounds like compassion. And, um, but it's I hard. Remember. It's hard though. Because oh, I'm, fall I'm asleep to the ego. I'm, I'm struggling with this, with the, the situation. Well, thank you for sharing that story. I know it's tough. and I, Oh yeah. I'm struggling with it right now. I actually yeah. had with a spiritual mentor of mine. I just literally days ago said mm -hmm. to her, I need help because I have, I'm experiencing hatred. Now I can open my records and I'll feel better. I know that. But sometimes if I'm in a space of I'm experiencing hate um, or anger, let's say anger, 
um, that's not the space that I feel comfortable opening my records. So it's a little funky, but um, I remember that somebody said to me once, you know, forgiving is not condoning. I love that. I love that statement. Because a lot of times people lump the two together. How could you forgive that person? You mean, it means you're okay with what they did. No, I'm not okay with what they did. I'm not okay with all the things my brother did. Um, but you know, this individual, I know this individual and I, you know, knew him for years and spent time with him and loved him. So I feel confused, duped, angry, sure. you know, sure. there's so many emotions going on. And I, and you know, my, and my, my mentor friend said, you know, we're human, we're human. So we're going to experience those human emotions. It's okay. But like you said, once you, you, you experience that and then you, you take a step back, you and, step back, yeah. you take a second yeah. or you, or it's the next day. And then you think differently because I've had compassion for this individual and I can't have that conversation with those around me because they just think I'm crazy. So I have to kind of hold on to my compassion and love. So I just give it to divine, take care of the situation, sure. please. Yeah. 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 It's tough. It's really tough. It is tough. It's frustrating. I, it's very frustrating. And, um, and it's funky. It's funky energy because one, as I'm sure you've experienced the way you described it, one feels dense, right? Mm -hmm. Feeling anger or feeling victimized um, is just dense. Ugh, it's just very third dimensional. <sighs> and then, and then the other is just like, oh, and when you, and when we get into that other, when we step into the other more expansive, high, higher vibrational state, it's like, I don't know about you, but then I go, oh, I can breathe. I feel yeah. better. It's like a roller coaster. It's like, the, yes. you know, like it's like, it really up is. And down. it's like, I'm holy or I feel yes. good. And then it's like, no, oh, I'm back down. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it is a roller coaster. Mary, this has been awesome. I love every bit Me of this too. conversation. Me too, How can Trey. people connect with you? Oh, um, okay. My website is um www.spirittherapybymary.com so it's just you know spirit therapy by mary.com so there's going to be two t's in there because spirit ends in t and therapy begins with t mm -hmm. and then my website i mean i'm sorry my email is um a divine realm at gmail.com a divine realm at gmail.com make sure you guys go up and hit her up and, and tell her that you <laughs> want to buy you. that book and that you love her work. Um, last question, Mary, kind of big. What do you want your legacy to be? Hmm, that's an interesting question. Um, yeah, you know, here it is. Um, I want people to say, Mary's that person who showed me who I, who helped me see who I am. Hmm. Hey, I bet that's yours. <laughs> mine that's is, it. Mine, my legacy is, I thought about this today and I don't know, I don't know if it's ego or if it's me. It, was, it came to me, I think it was when I was meditating or right after it was like, or maybe it was running, but I want to be the example. Nice. Nice. I, I think example. you already are that, by the way. Yeah. You know, enjoy, you know, I'm going to mirror that right back, you know, right back at you that you already are that Trey, you already are an example of love and action. There's no way you'd be doing this if you were not love and action already. And I think probably when you, when you, uh, I, I, I sense that when you, uh, experience Andrew Harvey mm -hmm. in his writings too, and, and his interpretations of Rumi, you're going to feel at home. I think you're going to say, I think I know something. I think, I think this guy is me. I'm him. I don't know. I just got to hit on that, but you are already that. So thank you for doing what you do. Mary, my wife's going to thank you when she sees an Amazon bill coming. <laughs> and he has, like, I think he has like 38 books. So 38 good luck. books. <laughs> something like cart. that. Or 33. <laughs> in the cart. That's what I do. I just have Blame Mary sitting in the cart. Yeah. Yeah, blame me. Gave you another one. <laughs> but we'll we'll be watching that Netflix. We'll be watching that Netflix flick show. So just give a shout out on uh, you know, special thanks to her on there. It should be good. Mm -hmm. Um, Mary, <laughs> so much for joining. This has been fantastic. Thank you. This I mean, I love, I love, 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 love this conversation. Me too. 
Me too. I had it. I love it. And it felt like 15 minutes. Isn't that I interesting? Know. I know. It's great flow. I'm I love it. You. Well, keep, keep doing what you're doing because yay.